And it's great to have Rob with us as we approach the feast day of Mother Seton, which takes place next week on January 4th. Rob, thank you for being with us today. Uh, Manet, uh, Bishop Reed, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be on your show. Hey, Rob. You know, for those who have uh, never been to the shrine, including me, uh, could you tell us about the shrine and, and what people will experience, what they'll see when they arrive at your doors? Absolutely. So the National Shrine of Elizabeth Ann Seton is located in Emmitsburg, Maryland, which is about an hour and a half north and west of Baltimore and Washington, just below Gettysburg, PA. And these are the grounds where St. Elizabeth Ann Seton came in 1809. She founded the Sisters of Charity of St. Joseph here. Um, and the shrine is made up of the two historic homes where she lived with her children and her early sisters. She prayed here. She sent her sisters forth from here to serve the poor. Ultimately, she passed from this life to the next in these houses. And then we also have a grand 800-seat basilica, and she's entombed in, that, in the side altar of the basilica. And we have a, a, a wonderful museum that shares her artifacts and, and, and her, her life story here at, at, at her shrine. So that's kind of what makes up um, her national shrine. Beautiful. And again, I know, Rob, I was talking about this with you before the show started, but the images of the shrine and the grounds are just absolutely beautiful. So anyone who has yet to go, definitely check out the website. But, you know, Rob, heading into 2023, can you talk about some of the things that are happening at the shrine come the new year? I know you broke ground this past year on renovations for a new visitor center and museum. Can you just tell us what is to come in this new year? Absolutely. So, um, just about a year and a half ago, the uh, Sisters of Charity of New York donated some amazing artifacts that had not been seen by the public uh, from Elizabeth Ann Seton's life. This included her iconic bonnet, the actual only known part of her habit to exist, uh, the christening gown that she used to baptize her, her daughter, Catherine Seton, uh, wedding miniatures that her and Will gave to one another on the occasion of their wedding. We know Elizabeth Ann Seton was a married saint as well as a religious. So um, what we've been doing is making plans uh, to renovate and open a brand new museum and visitor center that will feature all of these amazing artifacts to be able to share them with the public so that her story as a very relatable human American saint comes alive and we're looking forward to opening that new museum next fall in September. So that that's probably the big project that we're working on and we're really excited about it. Rob, uh, you know, people are asking me all the time, uh, you know, Father, is there a place that you know of that I can go on retreat? I know the Shrine offers retreats and programs through the year. Could you tell us about some of those uh, those opportunities? Absolutely. We. We welcome, you know, we have a full liturgy schedule. So if a family or an individual or a group of friends just wants to come out and make a day of pilgrimage, we have mass, confessions, and adoration six days a week, Sunday all the way through Friday. So you can just come on any day, and we have built in worship, um, you know, activities for people. Uh, we also have uh, rooms where groups can come. So many parish groups or school groups will come. And they might bring their own priest, and they, you know, the priest is obviously very welcome to say Mass in the Basilica. You can even make arrangements to say Mass by Mother Seton's tomb. She's entombed right there in the side altar. Um, and, and, and food can be brought in. So it's just a wonderful facility to, to retreat uh, and to think about where, where you are in, in, your, in your faith journey. No matter where, where that is, the shrine can, can help you uh, reflect. Wonderful. And Rob, you know, most people who may not know much about St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, maybe they're wondering, okay, why is there a shrine dedicated to her? Why should I make a journey out to Maryland? Can you speak briefly about maybe the life or example of St. Elizabeth Seton that would really draw people in or draw people closer to God? Yeah, so St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, of course, is the first native-born American to be canonized a saint. She was canonized in 1975. And I think one of the reasons that people connect so well with her is her very human experiences, right? She was born in 1774. She suffered a lot of loss in her life. She lost her mother when she was just two years old. Her father uh, was the first public health officer in New York and was away much of the time. He was fighting yellow fever, right, which was kind of the COVID of the day. Uh, but that kept him kind of distant. So she had a lot of loneliness as a child. 
but a very strong faith. She was an Episcopalian. Um, she, she fell madly in love with her husband, Will Seaton. They had five children very quickly uh, at a young age. She was in a prominent family, uh, but then they lost their wealth. Uh, they actually declared bankruptcy. Will's health failed, and she ended up losing Will. So, you know, here's a woman in 200 years ago, right, who's widowed, bankrupt, and yet has a really strong belief in God's providential care, that come, come what may, God has a plan and that God will take care of her. She ends up being introduced to the Catholic faith through the Feliki family. And when she realizes uh, the Catholic, our, our belief of the real presence, you know, Christ truly present in the Eucharist, that's what pulls her into the church. So a very Eucharistic saint, she then goes on to found a religious community and a school. Uh, really, she was trying to support her children when she founded the school. Uh, and, and we see, you know, so much good came from what she did. Her sisters um, led the uh, establishment of schools and hospitals and orphanages all across the country. And all of that came from her just like simple saying yes to God. So I think people, they look at all those different ways that she was human, right, and very regular, but also extraordinary. Rob, you know, uh, you are an incredible spokesman for the shrine and for the life and the witness of Mother Ann Seton. Uh, we thank you for taking this time uh, to be with us in the living room to explain uh, the opportunities that are there at the shrine for people when they come and visit, uh, make a pilgrimage. Uh, we're so grateful that you've taken this time. We can only be with you for a few minutes, though. How can people learn more about the shrine, perhaps online? Well, thank you so much, Bishop. Our website is setonshrine.org, and, and there's a lot of resources to learn more about St. Elizabeth Ann Seton there. Fantastic. Well, Thank Rob, you, Rob, God bless you. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year, and uh, happy uh, feast day next week. You have a big one coming up. Mm -hmm. Thank you, and Merry Christmas to you, to you both. Merry Christmas. You God bless. Thanks for your time.